Hey there guys and welcome back to another FPV guy video. As you know, I'm at NAB 2017 here together with Barry from DJI. And he's gonna introduce us to a couple of the new products. I'm not gonna get into all the DJI products because if you don't know what all the birds are, you haven't been paying attention. But there is a couple of new, very commercial, prosumer and professional oriented products that's of interest to you and me. And that's of course you have finally a professional radio. We certainly do. And that's the Sendence. It's our latest remote control. I hope you guys can see that. As much as we can see. I'm, I'm wired, so I can oh, only get in so We don't want to set here. off the alarm. So here we have the Sendence remote control by DJI, just announced here at NAB 2017, and the new Crystal Sky display. Note that this is the 1000 nit screen. This is not the brightest one. Okay. They have brighter than this. So for me, this particular screen right here. You've got touch screen on this. Oh, it's fantastic. It is absolutely. It has everything that we're used to in DJI products. And I'll show you that right now. Like, you know, these, these little features that we come to love and know, it's all there. But so much more. This is an over 30 channel remote control. So compared to this too. If, if you guys remember the Futabas, there was like a 14 channel. There was and an 18. 18 channel. I paid three grand for an 18 channel remote. Yeah. I never owned one. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> this one here, under thousand dollars, over 30 channels. Okay. Programmable. And, and one of the big things I know with this thing is you can switch profile. You can. So you can have three different hot birds and you can pick a profile for number one, two or three that you're ready to fly. Yeah, I can have this bound to more than one bird. Interchangeable batteries, I don't have to bring my remote in anymore to charge it. it I just pop right the battery out, put it in my pocket, I'm good to go. I'm out in the field. This battery's been plugged in since 8.30 this morning. It's what, noon? It's noon. And it's at 17%. And it's been running non-stop. So that's basically almost five hours. Yeah, of time you're, you're going to get. They're claiming six. Here's a real-time test. We're approaching five hours. I would say five, now. but yeah. that's still an enormous number. It is. It's very huge. So you can shoot all day long with two or three batteries and never turn the remote off, which is a godsend for guys like me. And the other thing you showed me. We got a proper slider down here, yep, right in here. addition to the regular buttons. And these buttons here, we're so used to pushing in on this and, and cutting through our menus for shutter right. speed, you name it. And here yeah, now, nicely. this is actually pan. So here's my tilt, right where it should be, and here's pan. So now I can do those complicated 45 degree shots by very just, easy. By yeah. just giving a little bit of input on both of them. Right, and so let me get focus here. Oh, focus here. Oh, I'm in manual focus again. Okay, here we go. So now you can pull the focus. Yeah, I don't need the big the... focus knob on the side. I can pull focus right here instead. Oh, brilliant. Here's, here's all my settings for aperture, for shutter speed, for ISO. So right here, and I can, I can readily read it right here on my built-in LCD screen. So that means I can swipe this off and use this full screen without the extra step. So we, so we don't have to have the distracting overlays on the screen. Uh, yeah, exactly. All in all, this is an absolute win to me, this remote. I've been using it for about three weeks now. First time I plugged it in, I put it my iPad Pro 9.7. That's a standard for guys like me. That is the brightest, most crisp screen we have. I turned this on, held my iPad next to it. It looked muddy. Half the brightness, because it is half the brightness. Wow. Yeah, just blew me away. Blew me away. So this is twice the brightness of an iPad. An iPad Pro 9.7 is approximately 550 nits. This is a 1,000 nit. This is not the brightest screen that DJI is going to come out with. They're coming out with a brighter one. How much is that? 2,000 nit. So that means we can sit in the California desert and see the screen. It means even with this one here, when I'm out in the desert shooting with my wife, Sunset, the other night, I had to turn the screen down because it was blinding me. <laughs> I wish I could say that happened to me. Now, now Barry, other than the radio, you have a big thing here. And it's actually locked down, so I'm just going to show you some pictures, insert pictures. It's not just a funny looking DJI fanboy hat. What this is, is an auto tracking high gain antenna on a two axis stabilized system. So this like is, a servo and servo. Yes, correct. And it's connected to one of the antenna ports. The antennas are removable on this, on this remote. On the new radio. So I pull, put one as an antenna and the other is your CAN bus cable. So it's bi-directional communication. When I put my Inspire 2 or M200 in the air, it actually auto tracks it. It actually auto tracks the unit for me. So anybody who 
who's been doing this for a while, the sun's hitting our monitor. We turn our back to our monitor, to our so we shade our yeah, shade our so we can see our time. screen. And all of a sudden, we start losing transmission signal because we're blocking it. Because we, we have to turn around, make sure our antennas are in the right area, all this kind of stuff. With a unit like this, we set this up on a tripod. And let's see if the users can see the inside of this. I'm not sure if you can see that OK. That, that so kind of shows high antenna High-gain antenna there. inside of there on a stabilized gimbal. And this unit will actually track your Inspire 2 or M200. So it's using the GPS and altitude from that, the Inspire? That's right. Does this have a GPS in, on board itself? I'm not sure about all the specs now, other than what I've told you. And we're used to up to four kilometer range. That is up to 10 kilometer range south. That's, now, that's two thirds, that's like um, a lot of miles. It's ridiculous. Now, I fly visual line of sight always yes. as a religion. But not always, I'll be truthful about this. When I'm out trying to find somebody's kid in the forest, or looking for grandma with Alzheimer's, and I've got law enforcement next to me, you and they're deferring airplanes, there. line of sight is not gonna be an issue for me. I right. have to find a victim. And because you know it's a safe out. environment to find. Absolutely, absolutely. So I do see a need for this, as well as in congested Wi-Fi areas. There is a need for this technology. Wi-Fi areas have a huge impact on the signal we're getting. Absolutely, they do. Microwave transmitters also broadcast for emergency personnel and things like that. It's yeah. a fail-safe system put in place to help our emergency responders, and that is also 2.4 gigahertz. Right. So flying into that path, that's why I see a lot of people all of a sudden my bird just went into attitude mode. Typically, that's what's happening, is you've gone through a microwave transmitter's path. Yep, it's true. I've done that with a train. Yep. One of those things next to the railroad tracks. Yes. Guys, when you see a thing next to a railroad track, do not fly objects around it, yes. because it didn't work well. Yes, unless you're fluent and flying a manual or attitude mode. Which is how I landed. Yeah, yeah but absolutely. But there's still nothing scarier than when you come flying through and you think all is good and you realize you just went through the Yagi antenna. Yes. And all of a sudden I'm flying manual and the GPS just left. Right. So I see a lot of people building, uh, making alternate antennas to fit on our remotes. Yes. It's still more or less line of sight. This one here will auto track your bird. It'll be mounted on a tripod. Or with yeah, because a couple of the rabbit ears, yes. you kind of need to point them to you the bird. You still need to point them. This will stay pointed at the bird at all times. But, but also there's another, I mean, there's search and rescue, there's industrial applications where you have a high noise environment. Absolutely. But I think the other important thing is because a lot of us that have flown out a bit will notice that we're going from looking at a high res image on the screen, it's starting to deteriorate, yep. and it's getting less and less resolution because the, the pipeline of signal is becoming less. That's right. That's so right. if you're shooting for a live event for broadcast, having a better signal also means that the signal you're going to send out to the bus is going to be a better signal. It's much solid, much more solid, less pixelation, less yes. problems, less, less blockage it's happening. It's like a sports screen. event where you're tracing runners mm -hmm. one at a time. Or it's, absolutely, like it's actually turbocharging your remote. That's what it's doing. We like yes. turbocharged remote. Yes, we do. <laughs> so this is our two news that we had about $1,000 for your new radio. Yeah, the radios, uh, they, uh, it was announced at the press event at $9.99. Uh, Crystal Skies, I can't quote the pricing on it. I think the most expensive one is about a grand. That's the 2000 nit one. And something around seven hundred and something dollars for this one, which is one thousand net, and four hundred and something dollars for the, the little guy. One. That's way over there. Yeah. But that's I mean, being able to see what you're pointing your aircraft at, and more importantly, see the aircraft stats and yes. the information about the aircraft clearly yes. is hugely important. Yes. Even in bright sun. I know. I yes. Like, so, so what are we looking at cost-wise for the this one? I do not know. I don't have any information on the tracking antenna. It's the first time I saw it was at this show. Now, it's big and it's an, actually an important tool for you guys if you're flying at any range, but it's probably not going to be obscenely expensive because we used to build these ourselves back Absolutely. in 2010. This technology is uh, on broadcast helicopters right now to beam down their segments. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a pretty straightforward yes, it technology is. and it's because, not hugely involved. Because DJI is such a leader in gimbal technology, right. you know, it makes sense. And so they're going to bring the same algorithms into this unit here, except for now we got a high gain antenna. It's not little. It's about this big inside the shell. Yeah, yeah. yeah I see. It's a beast. We know yeah. exactly how big it is. We see the shell. Yes, we are. Well, thank you so much for taking some time with us. <laughs> we'll see I you again. It. I hope so. Well, I think we talked last year, actually. Oh, yeah. We'll see you next year, too.